Twitter. And we are live. Welcome to another edition of Artist Relations Corner with me, Alex Auctioner, Artist Relations Manager for Orange. Today, we have a very special Artist Relations Corner because we are joined by our good friends, Tom Peterson, bass player for Cheap Trick, and a man who has worked with many artists, ranging from Mick Jagger to Frank Black to Donovan. And then we've got Jason Narducci, Orange Ambassador for Orange, bassist for Bob Mold Band, Super Chunk, and a singer-songwriter in his own right because he has a group called Split Single that is very good. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Peterson, Jason Narducci. Hey, everybody. Howdy. I haven't worked with Jason, though, not yet. What's what's up with that, Jason? You haven't what? We haven't, I haven't worked with you. Well, actually, you have on September 2nd, 2018. I recorded with you? I'm talking about recording, uh, real work. Yeah, we have recorded, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, not, yeah, that, that's different. <laughs> it's good to see you. Great to see you too, Tom. Uh, first question for Tom, real quick. Tom, why are there two S's in your name? Uh, Is why? that your birth name? Is it spelled that way originally? No, it wasn't. But it was um, it was the original spelling when my, my grandmother came from Sweden through Ellis Island, and they kind of dropped people's complicated names. I think it had originally two T's and two S's. So you just so brought it back. Is that I brought a it throwback? Back. Okay. Well, you know, where, where, where I grew up in, in Rockford, Illinois, it was a huge uh, Swedish community. So the name Peterson is so common. I mean, you go in the phone book and, you know, whatever, pages and pages. So it always, but then you go anywhere else and it's not that common. So I just, I don't know. So it's. It, it had a, it had two S's originally, but that was way before my time. Right, that's funny, man. My, my name's actually a Ellis Island screw up as well, but they confused it even worse than it was. It should have just probably been A X E R, but instead they turned it into this bastardized French German thing that no one can pronounce. So. Yes, you can if you do. It, I have it written out how it's pronounced, so I always <laughs> <have> it right, <laughs> like in the dictionary. <laughs> Phonetically, yes, that's awesome, man. Uh, well, so what's that? Hold on a minute. Don't, how did he get left out of this? Me? What, what about well, Narducci? Yeah, my name got changed. What name is that? It used to be CCI. It used to be Narducci, and my great grandfather, or possibly my great great grandfather, had to change it because uh, in the United States they were prejudiced against Italians. And uh, so they changed it to CY, and it's stuck. And there aren't many, very, there aren't a lot of us. So Google searches are easy for me. And uh, um, but and I'm a mutt. I'm I'm Italian, German, English, um, Irish. So um, yeah, it's a unique name. All right. Well, thank you. Good night, everyone. <laughs> You're a mutt. Who is it? Honestly, I gotta I gotta bring this up. Whoa, nice a cave. blanket. Oh, the blanket. Yeah. Oh, Where are you? Your tour manager gave us uh gave me this, man. Mr. Brian St. Clair. Where are you that you need a blanket? It's the middle of June. <laughs> oh, I'm in Atlanta. It's just for show. Okay. So the reason that I invited Jason is because Jason is one of the biggest and best and all-knowing cheap trick fans that I am friends with. So it only made sense to bring him along to see if he had anything specific to ask you, Tom, because I know that you're argue. I would say probably his, his favorite bass player, I guess. Yeah. So, you know, what can you say? I'm up here. Yeah. Alex, I, I really appreciate you thinking of me. Um, I actually don't have any questions for Tom. Well, that's it. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Okay. Well, then, uh, all right. We're going to go ahead and uh, thanks for joining us, Jason. Uh, yeah, thank you, Jason. That was nice. He, he already asked me one question. He, you know, when we saw each other. Whenever, when did we see each other last in person, Jason? Um, hmm. In Chicago, somewhere, I assume, right? That's, yeah. Is that where you live, right? Uh, I can't remember what show, but um, was it that private party at uh, on the lakefront? It was for like um, this really small thing, but it was uh, Airy Crown. Might have been Airy Crown. The lake for you mean Lake Michigan? 
Yeah, it's in Chicago. You guys did a private party at Airy Crown. Oh, I don't remember it. Yeah, well, that's because you do 250 shows a year. Yeah, that could be. <laughs> I do have questions. It ended fairly abruptly, too, didn't it? Yeah. Um, I guess I could ask questions about that. I mean, I people think that I tour a lot, but I don't tour anywhere near as much as you guys do. Why do you think um, Cheap Trick wants to spend so much time on the road? What is it about uh, the four of you that that's an important thing to do? Yeah, and what's your diet like that allows you to do this, this much touring? Well, you know, we, we, we go out a lot. We go out to the back and forth a lot. We're not going home like for two years at a time. But on the other hand, we are back and forth. We don't do 250 days a year anymore. We can do it. We have like 290 days. What is that noise? You hear that? I think it's between your guys' computers, potentially, since you guys aren't using earphones. Oh, should I go to headphones? Yeah, maybe try maybe try some headphones and see if maybe just one of you doing that would uh, would help. Also, you can hear that. It's not just me. Oh, no, it's not you. All right. Look, it could be me. Not just me. There's <laughs> something feedback here or whatever. Let's ask Jason the hard questions while he's gone. Oh, um, yeah, he... <laughs> Well, we, you know, we we're in a position where we have enough success that we can work, you know, so we can and but it's not there is not a huge a big enough success where we can actually stop either. So we we keep going, you know. It's a really honestly a small business that we have to continue to work to uh to survive. And that's really it. And Luckily, we enjoy doing it, and we get along. And you know, we've got, we've got a great fan base, which is really fantastic. That's a, a big thing that I think we all miss is seeing people. It's kind of like having a corner bar. You have regulars and people you you see a lot, and you know, there's different people you've never seen here. But it's uh, and you, you miss seeing the people, you know. And now with social media, you can see people on you know different social media platforms, but. It's, it's not the same, but it's nice to see people you recognize and like, oh, they're, you know, and you don't necessarily know them, but you kind of do and you kind of think you do. And, and we, I, you know, I miss all that. So we're used okay. to work, but we just work because we really have to, you know, keep going. We can't really afford to stop, basically. Right. That's, the, <laughs> you know, you, know how it is. you, guys you have to work. want to, though. There's no question about that, right? Why are you there at Orange working? You know, what the heck? Why don't you just retire? You will. Uh, someday. See, now you want to. Hey, wait a minute. So, uh, Jason, the answer was uh, life-changing. Uh, <laughs> it, it reaffirmed everything that I believe is good about music. And yeah, it's yeah. unfortunate that you weren't here for it, but I'm sure you'll see it in the replay. You so can, you hear, can you hear me now? Yeah. Is it better? Is the sound better? Yeah. Great. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, Sorry yeah, about everything's, that. everything's good. No, actually, uh, well, uh, Jason, it was the answer was uh, it's necessary. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, there's that. But it seems like a lot of bands that you know could use the money still don't do it as much as you guys do, or as consistently over the years. Um, well, I I don't know really. You know, we uh, like I said, we do get along, and we you know, and it's it's what we do. We're used to doing it. We've been doing it. You know from being in dive bars and whatever since the middle 60s, really. Yeah, yeah. Not not a cheap trick the whole time, but mostly. Right. And just really, uh, we just keep going, you know, and we get offers and like, do you want to do that? So we're kind of, it's a bit like we're on call. You know, we can't, we can't really plan on anything else because something might come up and like, okay, I'm sorry, I'm not available to, you know, do yeah. love or whatever, you know. Right. So and and what is the process for the band? You get, um, let's say you're about to start a tour. Um, does the band get together to rehearse, or are you guys have you been playing together for so long that that's not even necessary? No, we, we well we never. It, we don't get together to start a tour. The the tour never stops. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. right. Typically, with the same necessarily with the same acts, but it's just we just kind of keep going. Yeah. We'll be with somebody and then if there's a, a week off we'll do our own dates on our own and you know we'll be back and forth so 
it never stops. It has stopped now, so I suppose when we got going again, whenever that might be, I don't think we'd have to rehearse. All we have to do is figure out what we're going to do and then, you know, just kind of revisit this stuff. Do I remember whatever they are, the songs? And Yeah. I, you know, I don't know. We've never had any time off, so <laughs> right, right. I don't know what it's like. <laughs> what's the What's the process for writing a set list? It's really random. We just do it on the spot right before we go on. Our, our crew really likes to have it way ahead of time, but that has never happened yet. Yeah. Is there is there a person that takes lead on creating that set list? A lot, um, now, a lot of times, it, it's Robin and his his son, Robin Taylor, and uh, and Dax, and really, you know, working with Dax and and Robin Taylor is great because they actually know all of our material, where we don't. So <laughs> it, it comes up where, hey, you should do this song. It's like, how does that? you know, hum a few bars, how does that go, or whatever it is. You don't, you know, we don't remember every song that we recorded. Yeah. No, it's certainly not, not even close. But those guys have taken it upon themselves. They really, you know, so we're like, oh, what's the bridge? Or how does that, <laughs> what key is that thing in? You know, and then how does this, so it's, it's great having those guys, because then we can throw in things that are really random that we've never played before. And what we do is we will run through things Excuse me. It sound checks. Ah, uh, okay. We were really going. You know, we don't really have a like a giant production and all the stuff going on. So there's no real actual rehearsal necessary. You know, when we did the Sergeant Pepper shows, we you know, yeah, we had to rehearse that stuff because we've never done it before, and there are a lot of other people involved, and it's pretty crazy. But our own stuff, you know, no, we don't really get together and rehearse. We know, you know enough stuff and then as we're working we'll go yeah we're riding around going we should do such and such a song or let's do something from the you know all shook up record and like okay let's oh we haven't haven't done this and it really there is no real method to it it's just really at the last minute and it's you know it's it's I wouldn't say it's difficult but different types of fans want to hear different things so you mm -hmm. kind of when you know people that don't see you very often or, or have never seen you want to hear songs they recognize and diehard fans don't care about hearing songs they recognize they'd rather hear you know stuff they never heard before or you know just really obscure things so in a way everybody's mad at you at all times <laughs> <laughs> are there any songs that you want to play but no one else wants to play live. <laughs> you know Probably. What I mean? You're trying to sneak it into the set list every week. <laughs> Not really. No, it's the, and we, we haven't really done songs that we've recorded that we couldn't stand or really hated. This really, if somebody really hated something, we wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. We've always kind of been that way because we really look at recording as you know, something that we enjoy doing and then really enjoy making something out of nothing really. And it's it's really a great, it's really the most satisfying thing that we do is finishing a record and listening to it back and wow, it's, it's really great. And we do it for our own enjoyment and for people that we know, like, you know, like Jason or Alex, you know, we, like, oh, I can't wait to play you this thing, right? You gotta hear this song. It's exciting, you know. But you know, you play things for your peers and people you like and you're you're excited about it. We never have thought about recording, you know, what do people really want to hear? What what's popular? What a you know, what's on the charts, what can we do to be more successful? We have no idea. We just do what we enjoy. And uh yeah. we'll that's like that. the same way that Orange designs amplifiers. Is that right? Yeah. We Adrian Emsley, the designer, is just like, oh, you you want this? That's cool. Uh, I, I don't want to give you that. I'm going to give you something completely <laughs> different. Whatever I want. It's great. But that's been discontinued. Could I get that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't have that anymore. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love amplifiers, by the way, Alex. I really... Well, we've, I, I'm we've, glad that you brought that up 
Tom, because that's what I was going to ask about next. You guys are both orange ambassadors. And Tom, you, you, I mean, actually, Jason and I is, is, an, is a more OG ambassador for Orange than you are, Tom. I, I'll be honest with you. I, what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know if that means either. <laughs> <laughs> because, Tom, I think, I think we got involved with each other, what, maybe seven, six, seven years ago? Uh, you I would mean, know. I don't yeah. know. I mean, Jason, I think, I think, I think Tom him. went. I think Tom went to London in 1968 and went to the Orange Jam. Well, oh, that's different. Store. That's different. Cooper's <laughs> store, Orange Music. Yes, and yeah. he was building. He was at the time building amps in his back room, and he said he was building. I don't, you know, amps for Fleetwood Mac. You know, Peter Green had just started Fleetwood Mac at that time. Yeah. And, you know, we loved Fleetwood Mac. So we, the first time I saw Orange Amps really in action was with Fleetwood Mac and. Must have been when they first came to the states in '69, early '69. So that's that pretty was, awesome. they had, had that giant thing with the 50 speakers, the thing that nobody could transport or get through doors. It, that was <laughs> yeah. No that's what, I mean, it's pretty awesome that you were able to see the original Orange Store in action at the time. You know, and Rick to uh, actually has a story that he tells to Cliff Cooper, our founder at NAMM, every single year he walks <laughs> up and he tells him the exact same story like he's never told it before. And it's that he bought one of the original Orange Jams from that store. That's right. Um, yeah, and, and he still has it too. Um, he didn't realize he had it. You remember that story, right? Yeah, yeah. He came up somehow and you go, wait a minute, you have one of those? We, you know, oh yeah, I'm using it as a, I don't remember what it was. I think his son had it. One of his sons had it. Yeah. But it's great gear. But, you know, we couldn't – the reason we bought, at that time, Sound City amps, Sound City was kind of the the poor man's high watt or Marshalls. That's what everybody really wanted, you know, at that right at that time when Hendrix came around and, and you know, Marshall stacks and all that and the Who with high watts. And, but Sound City and Laney, they were less expensive, so they were the ones we decided to get – Sound City because we couldn't afford. Yeah, you know, they're probably half the price. But you know, stacks of amps like that. You know, these four by twelve stacks and those hundred watt heads. Those weren't. That was a new development. They didn't have. You know, you had Fender Basements or Showmans and whatever. All, you know, different kind of gear. But that stuff, it just looked so cool. And then you know, and later we were able to afford afford orange gear. So. Now we're all set. <laughs> yeah, and you have a very interesting rig too. I mean, it's it's basically I don't know what it's at right now because you have one of the most ever evolving rigs of anyone that I've ever worked with. But uh, you know, in the past, you've had both orange guitar and bass uh, amps. I so I mean, yeah, tell tell us a little bit about where it's at right now that that rig. Well, what do you think? It is. I don't remember. No, it's a I, <laughs> using really mainly is a, the AD50 head, right? Is it the hand wired head? Which mm -hmm. did you continue it, Alex? I'm. I knew it. <laughs> we dis we did discontinue that one. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Most of your rig is discontinued now. I think <laughs> the giant bass head, which is great too. It's. It's uh, what is it, 300 watts, 600 watts? I don't know who needs that many watts, but you know, sounds good. It's impressive. But we, yeah. uh, th those bass heads are great because I like, uh, you know, distortion. Yeah, even on the low end, I really like that. That it smooths it out. But usually, when you add distortion to a bass amp, it just takes away all the low end, and that does not happen with those orange bass heads. You can add in a as much as not maybe not as much as you want you, you'd like it'd be ridiculous but you can get that great smooth distortion on the low end and you still have low end yeah so i like that jason you and, also play that 8200 yeah yeah i use uh, any, any comments what is that <laughs> just continue it? no doubt right no 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 it's still going what is i it? use a, a um uh, Roger Mayer Rocket Fuzz as my distortion pedal through those AD 200s, and I would say the same thing. It just it maintains that low end um, in ways that other bass amps don't. Um, unnamed bass amps, um, and uh, I mean, I remember. I think the first time I toured with Orange Amps was in Europe in 2010. That's when Alex and I met over over email, and um, I haven't I haven't looked back. 
Yeah, it's great. You know, and what's great too is if you if you have an endorsement deal with really a, a, a small company or somebody that's you know whatever it might be, a boutique. It, it's really not cost effective. They have to take your own gear, you know, right. overseas wherever you go. But if if you like, if you get the orange rig that you like. You can get it anywhere in the world. Yep. So it's it's fantastic. So you're really covered. You know what you're getting. The gear is really uh you know made for the road so it doesn't break down yeah and you can get it anywhere you don't have to send yeah, your own and then you know lose money on the tour right because if we fly into la to do tv or new york they'll have it they'll have it stopped yeah. yeah all right well that that fulfills the contractual obligations <laughs> i'll then ven i'll venmo you guys now oh <laughs> uh, no we got a couple comments here too uh somebody saw you at uh, Madison East High School senior prom in 1976. <laughs> Not possible. I was only six years old. <laughs> oh, Tom. Tom, sorry. I think that was that was a Tom comment. Oh, I mean, their senior. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say my senior prom. I wasn't at that. But. How amazing would it be to have your senior prom band be Cheap Trick? You know what I mean. <laughs> it can be arranged, definitely. <laughs> For the right price. <laughs> what do you think? In 1976? Uh, no. um, what, what was the question? I'm sorry. I, I, it wasn't a question. It was simply a comment that somebody saw you at a senior prom in 76, Madison East High School. I do remember that. That's right. Wow. <laughs> we didn't play that many proms. And, you know, I wouldn't characterize us as the perfect prom act i would we don't do cover <laughs> songs so basically everybody hated us because we weren't doing we weren't doing any disco we weren't doing any abba songs you know whatever was popular in 76 it would have been we didn't do any of the stuff from saturday night fever as much as i like the bgs i even like their disco stuff i love the bgs but disco in general you know we we were not a cover band you know meaning that we didn't do the current hits. So that meant that you were not popular, which we were not, <laughs> especially in 76. And then didn't you guys tour with Kiss in 1976? No, we weren't. We didn't even have a record out until 77. So no, it would have been so a, at least about a year later. The next year. Okay. So you yeah. guys went from proms in 76 to arenas with Kiss in 77. That's correct. And then when we were done with Kiss, we would go to back to the Pizza Hut and to the, the <laughs> Junior Prom, you know, Junior <laughs> Rex Nights, and people it, shouting at us for, you know, requesting Free Bird and Roller so, Coaster, and, you know, Brick yeah. House, whatever, you know, I don't know, stuff yeah. we didn't do. We were like, can't you get, well, we've got to do uh, whatever, what would have been a big slow, slow dance hit song back then. I don't know. Yeah. We somebody else we commented. Had, we had somebody else commented that uh, you should have no direction home be on your set list every show. Is that right? Well, it was for a while, and then we can now we do it sporadically. Yeah. So it's a treat. Um, oh, Charlie Cooper, marketing director for Orange, is here. Uh, he's mentioning that you got that TH30 from uh, from Denmark Street, the one covered in psychedelic paint. Are you talking about question mark, the graph graffiti artist? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's there. a really cool score. That's a cool, yeah, that's cool. Uh, what's the name of the store? 66, something, Sound 66. God, I can't remember the name of the store. Anyway, that it's a cool amp. You saw that, right? I did see it, yeah. That's a, uh, was it a, was it, did it go to charity or something? Not sure. Anyways, uh, in the comments, there's a there's a YouTube link to see how it was painted. I just saw it 20 minutes ago, so no, it didn't go to charity. It could. Should it? <laughs> no, not no, no. That whatever you <laughs> paid for it, I thought the money may have gone to charity. Uh, it may. I'm not asking you to donate your amp. I remember it's okay. I remember we had talked about it, and I said, you know, I told you how much I paid for it. You go, yeah, that's a little more than retail, but whatever. It's like, oh, I thought they gave me a great deal. What do I? <laughs> That must be a good deal. I was doing an interview in the store, 
And I saw that amp. I go, I've got to have that amp. It was so cool. And they told me the story about the graffiti artist. And so it's upstairs. And I use it all the time. Awesome. It's a great amp. TH30s are awesome. Um, what kind of hobbies do you guys have that people may not expect you have? You mean you're speaking for the, the, everybody in the band or just myself? No, d yourself. Yeah, you and, and Jason here. <laughs> so Jason and I. Jason, we've got to get in the friggin' band together. This is getting ridiculous. <laughs> Come on, we work together. We were in the same band. That's really working together. <laughs> we, uh, what was the question? I'm, Jason threw me off there. <laughs> what, oh, the question was, what kind of hobbies do you guys have that people may not expect? Jason, you first. Rock mm. bass players to have. Um, I'm a big basketball fan, so I used to do basketball you know fantasy basketball um don't do that anymore but i do watch old nba games because you can't remember what the score was or the, what the final yeah. score was how could yeah. you right well, some people do. yeah that's it um that's <laughs> watching television that's mine too <laughs> i stole yours <laughs> And you're really a guitar player, right? You're not a bass player. Come on. Yeah, good point. Busted. Bass player. Totally busted. I mean, if you can play guitar, you're a bass player. That's basically your well, bottom line. Oh, I have a question for you about that. I saw that you played in a band with Pete Kamita. Pete Kamita was the bassist in Cheap Trick after you in, in, in 80, 81. Yeah. Um, if you guys were in a band together, who played bass? I did. He played guitar. He's a guitar player. Oh, okay. okay. Great. He was. A, he was. You know, I don't know. At the, I haven't seen him in years. But he, his girlfriend was my girlfriend's best friend. That's how. Okay. So I knew him, and he lived in the city in Chicago, and sort of died at the time. So we would hang out a lot. And he had a band called Beowulf. They were they were a cover band, and he he just had a great sound and great feel. And he was you know a really really good guitar player. So he's much better guitar player than I am. So I still was the bass player. I see. Okay. I love that song, uh, Reach Out, that he wrote. Oh, yeah. We, we keep getting requests for that a lot. I don't know really why, but you like it. I like it. I like you it. it. It's like, hey, do reach out. Sorry, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, Robert Nielsen says that you are a great inspiration to him, and he is looking to add bass to his rig. Orange amplifiers is high on his list. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate that. <laughs> I bet what, he's adding a bass guitar to his. I think he's adding a bass amp to his rig. Oh, oh, he should. Eighty-two hundred. Tom didn't he have the eighty-two hundred. All it's got is a measly two hundred watts. It's just two hundred, yeah. Sorry. I mean, who needs more than that? Honestly, it's all, it's all PA anyway, right, Jason? This is another fine example of Orange's uh, designer Adrian. When everybody's like, marketing teams like, hey, we get a lot of requests for 300, 400 watt versions of this, and he's like, all you need is two hundred. I'm like, all right, never mind. <laughs> I mean, just so get another AD two hundred. That thing's heavy enough as it is. You don't need more yeah. weight. You got to no. do it like what Am Ampeg did in the '60s, right? Where they, they, you know, all these big amps were coming out. So what they did, they didn't improve the amps; they just added lead to the cabinets. <laughs> Even like they were more substantial. <laughs> okay. I think that's true. I'm not, you know, I have nothing against Ampeg. <laughs> I liked um, Ampeg before I before Orange came along. I was, I'll, I'll say that. That's what you were playing before Orange was Ampeg. I, I probably, yeah, I did. We we were always chasing that tone, you know, the ant whistle thing was the big thing. And then Chris Squire. So Standells kind of sounded like that. And I saw um, Spencer Davis group and uh, D. Murray was playing with Spencer Davis. And he was using Ampegs. And it's like, oh, my God, he had that sound. So you got to get it, you know. But I don't need to worry about that now because you got orange. Yay. <laughs> um, 
I kind of have a hypothetical here, but um, oh, you get man. one, you get one guitar and one amp for the rest of your life. <laughs> what are you? What are you guys choosing? What are you choosing, Tom? One guitar and one amp. One gu a guitar or bass. It's a big well, we can do either one. A difference, but there is a difference. How about a bass guitar, or bass amp? You get one bass guitar, one bass amp for the rest of your life. Well, if I've got to say an orange bass amp, of course. Why? Well, you don't have be, to. You really don't I, have to. No, I'm very. Will, I'm open. I will say that. Yeah. What? Whatever sort of bass rig orange has, I will use that. And really, the you know, I'd have to go. Originally, I would have said the first basses I really used, and I with cheap trick anyway, was a, a '64 Gibson Thunderbird, and I love T-Birds. Those two years they made those reverse T-Birds are unbeatable. They're loud, aren't they? Uh, not not really. They're comparable with you know P bases. I think I think P bases are great too. It's another thing where yeah. you had to have one base. The, the the Gibsons to me I like they're they're dirtier than the, mm -hmm. the Fenders, but probably for all around probably a Fender P base like a '62 P base or something. But I love my Gretsch 12 string bases. So if I had to choose one instrument, that would be it. Gretsch 12 string bass. I've got the Roundup version now with the G brand and the leather binding and it's just over the top. It's not here. It's in, it's, a, it's on the road, but we're not on the road. Yeah. So right. it's just sitting in. Where does Cheap Trick? Where do you guys keep all your gear? Where's Where's uh, HQ? Right by you, Chicago. Oh, okay. Jason, what is yeah. your answer to this question? One base, one amp. Well, I have some older P bases, some, I know, 74 and uh, 75, but I found a, I found this red 96 P base uh, right when it came out. And it's, you know, it's not technically uh, classic, but it's the one that feels the best to me. And everybody compliments me, you know, from recording with it or, or touring with it. They say, you know, what is that thing? Because it's, it's not a conventional um, classic bass guitar, but I just love it and it feels right. Um, there was a company in the aughts that sent me a 12 string bass, Tom. I, um, I can't remember the name of the company, but they basically said to me, if you let us use your picture on our website, we'll send you a bunch of instruments. And one of them was a 12 string, 12 string bass. Um, and it's fun to play, but I don't know how you manage that thing. I can't, I can't keep those things in tune. I'm sure the Gretsch design is much better than the one that I have. But yeah, no. The thing is, the the bases I have, the people I've made. Gretsch really was the first company I worked with that wasn't a boutique builder. So, it so it's a you know obviously a worldwide company, a big company, and it's been great. But none of the bases really, including the Gretsch, I mean, we'll fly with it, and it pull it out off the plane and it'll still be in tune. I never, right. it never gets tuned during the show. You know, it's, they, they'll st they stay in. Is it heavy? You know, I'm used to it. So yes, it's yeah. heavier than, yes. Yeah. But I am used to it and it's, uh, you know, you're on stage. I, I, I don't really sit around at home playing. I don't really sit around at home playing a bass really very much. I, to record, yes, I do. And edit home too, but it's not the first thing I gravitate to. I always play guitar. I started out playing guitar, and that's what I played for enjoyment, really. Yeah. And uh, but the, so the twelve string, if you just sit down in the chair and you're something, it's like man, this thing's hard to play. But if you're, you know, you're in a venue and you got it strapped on, you got the amps and the PA on, you know, then it gives you this, you know, you've got more power there, and it works yeah. fine. But yeah, it's. It's good because it, you, you've got your strength built up. I do have to play it, you know, more than I would want to just to keep up my, you know, muscle tone for doing it because it just takes, yeah, it takes strength, you know, forearm strength in your fingers. But yeah, because of it, playing a four string is like child's play. It's cool. Yeah. I love playing a four string because it's so freaking easy. You're just bored. <laughs> No, you can't. That's our sound. Oh. <laughs> Box myself in. 
Do you use a compressor on stage with the bass? No pedals. No. Are you loud on stage? Yes. You, yes. And uh, it pushes that air. Boy, you go back, you get that sweet spot where you go back, like ne next to the hi hat, up against the rig. It's man. You can, you can feel the PA, the power of the PA, but you hear that the tone, you hear everything perfectly. You can hear the drums. You can, you know, I'm following yeah. the drums. I got I to gotta know what he's doing. Yeah. It, uh, it's, you get in that perfect spot, and uh, it's just the greatest feeling. It's pushing air. Uh, it, I wouldn't really like it. I don't wear, use in-ears. I use earplugs. Mm -hmm. But honestly, when you hear the – when if you're doing a sound check, or, and it's like, wow, it just sounds fantastic, and I'm out there by myself, or like, maybe there's a runway or something, and I can go out like, wow. And then, and then the PA goes off, and you hear just the back line. <laughs> it's like a transistor radio. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> but you so it's like getting right back against that wall and having it blast you. You can you know it push, it's pushing air. It's great. Yeah, we have a question old, about the Waterstone bases mm -hmm. that you oh, used to use. That was it. That was the company that I was talking about. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, the one that sent you a twelve string guitar, yeah. Jason. Twelve string bass. Oh, 12 string bass. That's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he made all sorts of different instruments. He kind of did it really out of his for his own enjoyment. Um, so it was a boutique builder. He wasn't. He didn't build them. They came out of Korea. He 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 researched it and found the best factories. It was all the high the highest end, but kind of low, you know, imported, you know, from overseas bases. So they were you know pretty affordable. But he really just did the stuff for his own, you know kind of for fun. He would do batches of just come up with ideas for himself and make 10 of these yep. guitars and make 10 of kind of like what East, Eastwood, is it Eastwood that does all the knockoffs of all the pop guitars and nationals and anyway. But that, yeah, that was Waterstone. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Jason, you got anything else? Uh, Tom, are you in Nashville right now? Yes. How long have That's you lived there? Since 95. I have a friend who was in Nashville recently and they said that they were alarmed at how um, open it is as far as like clubs and bars and restaurants. And um, have you been out and about? Have you noticed? Uh, it seems like there's they're not being super safe right now. Uh, Jason, really? No. <laughs> No, I, uh, I'm not going to bars. Well, you know what I mean, like I, just walking by. <laughs> it seems like a really bad idea, that's for yeah. sure. So, you know, I've heard that those places are open, but then I've heard that some of them got closed because they were really flaunting. I don't know what they were doing exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't really, you know, I don't drink. I'm married with kids. I have no... There's no place for me in a bar. What am I doing? In a I bar? didn't. I didn't mean to intend that you were out hitting the hitting the bars. No, I just I'm thought you and Dad. Then I'm happy to be in a bar. <laughs> He's not a lust, Jason. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> what are you accusing him of? <laughs> He's booked. I know that. Oh <laughs> uh, no, that's funny. I can tell you this: uh, in Atlanta, it's business as usual, Jason. So yeah, wow. everything's yeah. just fine. Yeah. <laughs> no right. Corona. You keep telling yourself that. And yeah. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. It's a problem. Um, actually, uh, Tom, I was interested in asking you about Rock Your Speech, mm -hmm. uh, which is an awesome uh, organization, foundation that you founded um, to like yeah. promote awareness and understanding of autism spectrum disorder. That's uh, right. What, what do you, uh, what led you to do that? Tell us about that, man, because it's a, you know, I know that Orange has been a little bit involved in silent auctions and things like that over the years, but yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Rock Your Speech started because our, our son, Liam, who's now 13, but when he was a baby, we knew something was up with him. He uh, it turned out he was, you know, diagnosed with autism. You know, he, after like two or three years old, they can't do it before then. But anyway, we knew it, we realized there was something going on and he never spoke and 
until at least he, you know, he was at least six years old. He really didn't say anything, and he, uh, but he would sing along with things he'd hear on TV or in the radio. He'd kind of sing. The first thing he loved to hear the song "Blue Eyes" because he had blue eyes and his and he the Elton John song. So he would blue eyes, and then that was about it. And then whenever Elton would say the word, you know the words blue eyes he'd come in on the right spot and just sing that and then other things we'd hear him sing and he we, we'd watch a show dancing with the stars you know family show and the theme song was just some or whatever it was you know like the carson theme song or something it wasn't even a it was really no singing and he would sing along with it because there was nothing to it really and my wife said you know you want to put some songs together that have a really simple lyric content, but are rock songs and see what, you know, see what he thinks. So, all right, so I went upstairs, my little studio, and I put this thing together, this, this riff, and I did a thing called What's Your Name? And it's, the lyric content is What's Your Name? Da -da 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 -da. What's your name? And then hello, hello, and then what's your name? That's the entire lyric content. And I played it for him, put headphones on him, and he starts saying his name. And he was just loving it. He got to hear it over and over and over. And we were like, really? You thought, oh, this is really cool. And we went to the grocery store with him the next day. And he went up. He started going up to people out of the blue and asking them what their name was. He never <laughs> oh, even to us before. Whoa. My wife and I looked at each other. It's like, wait a minute here. So we just ended up doing it. I did, did a whole bunch of songs. She had phrases that she wanted that she thought would be helpful, that she, that the kid should say, if you can't speak, how do you say that you're sick? How do you say I'm tired? I my, you know. So we started using phrases that they would, that they probably heard before, but that were not little baby themes. You know, so we wanted things that were just kind of general, but that were easy to remember. And we just did started doing that, and we got involved in it, and did a record, and really ended up getting really closely involved in the music therapy world where they said, look, this is great for people with autism, but it's for every kind of musical therapy. We don't have any decent music. It's all wheels on the bus go round and round and, you know, people trying to learn how to walk again from being paralyzed or whatever, all sorts of different reasons. And music therapists, it's, it's such a great occupation and the people are in it for all the right reasons. And we really got closely involved with, uh, yeah, you know, all sorts of people. So that's what it was about. That's how it started. And, uh, you know, it's it, it kind of been put on hold. I, I had some time off at that time, so I put a whole record together, or we did. And uh, we had, you know, several people helping us, like uh, John Att from Concrete Blonde came out here and, and sang on a few of the songs. And we had Tish from The Dead Dead co-wrote a few of the songs with us and sang on there. And it's just, you know, all sorts of different people. And it's just kind of a... A fun thing, Audley Freed and his wife Jen Gunderman, you know, for they're with Cheryl Crow now, and Audley was with the Black Crows and Cry of Love, and she was with the Jayhawks, and just, just different people. But it's this, it's a, it's fun because it's simple stuff, but we want to make it kind of as heavy as possible. So it's easy That's to cool. sing, along, sing along with. That's awesome, man. Well, we've uh, we put the link to that in the comments here so that the people can click on it. So make sure you check that out. Um, yes, Rock Your Speech. Rockyourspeech.com. Cool. I, I just heard it again. for the. For, I hadn't heard it in a while. And our son came down. I have. I got a CD player. Try to find a CD player these days. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. He's a, so I got a CD player out for out here a little bit. And he's like, oh, CD. He, he just, can I play? He's showing. He's looking at it. And the but yeah, what is, he wants to hear the Rocker Speech CD. Oh, all right, great, fine. You know, they so went through the whole thing. It's like that. This thing sounds cool. <laughs> I hadn't heard it in a while. So nice. Um, Jason, what? Well, anything else that you want to ask Tom? Let's see, I had a little list here. Well, Jason, you are going to you got to unfold it. I oh, bet Tom, oh, I bet oh, Jason's I, list is long. I, now, well, I got a question yeah. for Jason. <laughs> Look, you're you were really uh, your first instrument was guitar right as before bass what <laughs> guitar on it would you want if you only had to have one guitar um i like the the 90s strat pluses 
with the lace sensor pickups. So it's got that strat tone without the uh, the buzz. You yeah. hate them. You hate them. What did I do? I just I, I just ruined the whole conversation. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, never meet your heroes, Jason. He's just kidding. <laughs> He's just kidding around. No, really. If you had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I did I not say Gretsch? I meant to say Gretsch. No, no, no. That, well, no. What would it be? I don't know. So a Strat. Yeah, I'm a Strat guy. Yeah. Yeah. I love Telecasters, so that mm -hmm. would be my car. Yeah. One car. Yeah. Um, who cares honestly anymore? We. I want. I want to know how you came across this. Uh, you're in a Ramones video. Something to believe in. How did that happen? Is that the name? I thought it was hands across your face. Well, that's Maybe. the that's the T-shirt that one of the people's wearing. But it, the song is called "Something to Believe In." I didn't even. No wonder I can't find that thing anywhere. <laughs> you've been trying to find evidence of you being in a Ramones video, and you've been typing well, I, in the wrong title. <laughs> I lived in New York City from like eighty-five to ninety. Okay. And um, I just knew Joey. And it just came up. So my girlfriend and I were in the video. Jana Allen and I were in that video. Not yeah. prominently. We were just in there with a bunch of other people. We didn't really have major roles. Yeah. But I don't remember who was all in there. Was it Debbie Harry and a lot of people like that? Probably. Yeah, John Doe. Um, uh, oh, I got to see that. Yeah. What, what's Xander the from uh, Circle Jerks. Um, uh, it's called something to believe in, but it's a weird video because it's sort of making fun of charity work, <laughs> and it's a very unusual <laughs> song for. It's a very unusual song for the Ramones. It's very poppy, and there's not a lot of loud guitars. Um, yeah, they thank so you at the end. It didn't take over like We Are the World. <laughs> thank you. At the they end. mock that. They have a. They have a Michael Jackson <laughs> look alike. They have a Michael Jackson look alike, and. Um, yeah, it's a weird video. I, I think, not look, I think the pretenders, <laughs> I think the there pretenders. It is. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Did I find it? No, I didn't. What is Ramon's aid all about? <laughs> people who care. We think the time has come for caring people who care about people to stand up and be counted. The Ramones are standing tall for every cause. Every cause. You can be your heart. Why are you, you hiding, Tom? I don't know. This As Joey Ramone says, he speaks for all of us. You're not in it. He speaks You're out of it. All of us. <laughs> I want to find the part where. Um, are you in there? Lionel Richie, look away. <laughs> Won't you please lend a hand? I was stupid all night. Trying to see what she, what they all call contenders. Can we, There's can we find Tom? There's, yeah, where are you, Tom? You're the one who said I was in there. I don't know. <laughs> You know how much it's been? 86. 86. Yeah, 86. Oh. oh, man. Weird Al's in it. Okay. <laughs> I'm Rodney and I'm in it. Rodney! Rodney. We're Sparks and he's in it. This is Debbie Boone, <laughs> urging you to give to the <laughs> Joey, here's the five bucks I owe you. There's a lot of love in this room tonight, and we're in it. And I'm Xander Schloss, and we're in it. And we're in it. X. <laughs> okay. I don't think I'm in it. I'm sorry. I'm starting to wonder if you're in it at all, yeah. Hey, thank Please you at the end. I do. Is that Ron Jeremy? Yeah. Tony Basil. <laughs> Ramon's egg. Let's make
make it a reality. Way too long. Way too long. Okay, here comes your name. <laughs> Boy, there's a lot of people in there. There he is. Wow. Ted Nugent. I didn't see Ted Nugent. I, I don't think all those people were actually in that one room at the same time. I don't remember any of that stuff. <laughs> it was the 80s. <laughs> it was. Wow. Oh, no. That was great. Well, I'm really glad that we were able to watch that with you, even though we couldn't find you. That was great. Even I'm not in there. <laughs> I skipped a little bit. You may never know. <clears throat> man, this is awesome, man. I really appreciate you guys coming out for this. Thank you very much. Uh, like there's any, anything else we want to talk about, I'm, I'm sure people are uh, ready to get back to their days. So Jason Arducci <laughs> and Tom Peterson. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. got to be sick of this by now. So anyway. Yeah, I, I have such a defeatist <laughs> attitude as it is. So, uh, <laughs> Jason, <laughs> on day it is Wednesday. <laughs> we'll get more views on replay. Uh, Tom Peterson, basis for Cheap Trick. Jason Narducci, basis for many bands and also an Orange Ambassador. Just had a play made about him as well. I don't know if anybody saw that or not. Um, that? What happened? Uh, Jason had a play made about his life. Well, and it was my, uh, first, in a, my first band. Yeah. Yeah. When I was when I was 10, 11 years old, I had a band called Verboten in Chicago and they, they made a musical about the band. What? Really? That's cool. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, so just wanted to drop that. So, Thank so you. Everybody knew. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Oh, whoa, man. <laughs> You could have been at that 1976 show. What are you talking about? What year? <laughs> uh, this we played at Verboten played at Cubby Bear with Naked Ray Gun and Rights of the Accused in January of 1983 when I was 11. Oh, Brian St. Clair then. Yeah, I knew Brian. I know Brian, yeah. but yeah. Well, Brian wasn't in Rights of the Accused at, at that point. It was uh, Anthony Alardi on drums, but Brian he later. Was all those, I think right. Yeah, I'm, I didn't meet Brian until. The 90s when he was in triple fast action oh yeah that was a great group too triple yes fast. great yes. song yes Ooh. west kid yeah local h one of my personal favorites as well he joined local I'll h yeah yeah kevin he yeah. asked was a great writer yeah too. kevin yep really good i saw him on his a solo tour in new york and he came out it was really great he was just alone with an acoustic i think and a record player and he had all of his tracks without vocals, just the basic tracks. And he would pick a song and play it, put it on the hi-fi there, and then play along with it and sing. Cool. <laughs> it was, That's you know, cool. Around like, oh, I'm going to put it. He flipped this thing over and had it. You know, it was. And it, I love that. It was good stuff. Awesome. Yeah, he's a Chicago one. Yeah, he's still That's around. Right? Yeah. We saw him fairly recently. Cool. Uh, all right, rock legend Tom Peterson, Orange Great Ambassador, with his own musical Jason Narducci. Thank you guys you know for me? joining us today. How do you get to be an ambassador, Alex? Like, wait a minute, how does how? What do you have? To <laughs> I called do? you rock legend. All right, and <laughs> Orange Ambassador Tom Peterson. <laughs> rock legend. It sounds ridiculous. It doesn't. You're in the Hall of Fame, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's technically legend status. Oh. You earned it. Orange and legend? legend before the Hall of Fame. Legend despite, in spite of the Hall of Fame. Ooh, I like that. All right, boys, thank you very much for being here. And uh, I'll talk guys. to you guys later. See you guys. Bye. Thanks for everyone for joining us as well.